Right now at 5.30, week four in the trial against the Unite the Right organizers in Charlottesville, Virginia. And today, after self-proclaimed white supremacist Chris Cantwell cross-examined himself, plaintiffs finally rested. And the defense exploded out of the gate with Richard Spencer calling none other than Richard Spencer to the stand. And then Cantwell followed suit calling himself to the stand. All right, so the question is, you know, who is questioning whom? One thing, though, is for certain, Judge Moon says that he is one step closer to delivering his Friday end deadline to the jury. Our chief legal correspondent, Seema Iyer, is one of a select handful of journalists allowed inside the courtroom. Seema joins us live now outside the Charlottesville courthouse. Seema, after the plaintiffs rested today, the defendants made motions now to dismiss and the judge gave quite a lengthy verbal ruling. Yeah, Judge Moon really commented on the evidence reading text messages between Cantwell and Spencer that were willing to risk violence for their cause and use the term race war. Can, see, can we assume the judge did not yeah. dismiss the case? You assume correctly, Brian, as you always do. Now, <laughs> the reason is not necessarily just because of what the defendants argued. It's also because of the standard. The standard in a motion to dismiss is they're going to look at the evidence in the light most favorable to the opposite party. So in this case, it's the plaintiff. And that's what the judge said. But he also made some very telling points about what we can expect during the jury instructions. He said to them, uh, to both defendants, self-defense, there's no self-defense when you're not in danger. So that's the judge looking at the evidence. He also said, for a conspiracy, you don't have to plan. You just have to join. And that is really huge because all of these guys keep talking about how they didn't plan it. He also said you don't have to do very much. Just go along with it. And the bottom line, guys, it is for the jury to decide whether the defendants planned a fight based on what the judge said is called a racial animus, guys. Yeah, and Seema, when Spencer called himself to testify, he stood at the lectern instead of sitting on the witness stand, so he was closer to the jury. So since they are in the audience, did that help him connect with the jury? And I also have a question of, overall, was Spencer's case a game changer for him? Okay, so I do think it helps with anybody being closer to the jury because you're able to make that eye contact, right? So what Spencer was trying to do is explain that the day of the rally, he was acting as he called in passive resistance. He had sparred verbally with the police officers and he played that audio for the jury and that that really wasn't that bad. He basically was just telling the cops, we are trying to peacefully assemble. He told the jury how he'd been maced by a counter protester going into the park earlier in the day, but then afterwards was maced by the police. And uh, Spencer said to all of us that the uh, that passive resistance was the most violence he engaged in all weekend. Now, I want to shift the script because at that point, at close to the end of Richard Spencer's examining Richard Spencer, he played something that we all now call the rant. And the rant is an audio and video recording, but he just played audio because it no longer exists and so long ago. This was a recording from that night, August 12, 2017, later that night. And this guy's he is screaming, his voice is guttural, and he is basically saying these words. I am coming back here every weekend. I rule the effing world. We are going to destroy this effing town. Now, I leave it up to you guys to decide whether this is a game changer, for our audience to decide whether this is a game changer, because perhaps it was smart for Richard Spencer. Sorry, guys. It was smart for Richard Spencer. It's okay, it's live television, we understand. And it's like you pick the busiest place behind your live shot. Yeah. Something's always going on, yeah, but we yeah. get it. I just, getting back to the case of real I quick, just want to tell you guys this one other thing. Just one other thing, and that is the, the, you know, Richard Spencer's idea, which he told us exclusively, was that he was going to put everything on the table. So perhaps it was smart for him to play the rant and then explain it. 
Now, back to you. All right, Seema, real quick for you, because this is a lot to process, and, and people are really sticking with this case as you're kind of breaking this down for us. Chris Cantwell also presented his defense today, and part of it was included playing a secret recording. Yeah, Cantwell made that with one of the reporters in the press room that you're in every day. What was the purpose of this, and is that even legal? Okay, so number one, he played it to show that he was nonviolent. And the reporter, her name is Elle Reeve. She's a very prestigious uh, reporter. She worked for Vice. Now she's with CNN. She's gotten deep, deep, deep into these group of white supremacists. She's perhaps one of the most foremost authorities in the country on this story in its entirety. And I looked at her and I said, did you know? And she just kind of gave me a look like, yeah, she knew. So Cantwell had done this secret recording of their conversation. That was when she was at Vice. At Vice. They did this huge interview. And then he took the recording, guys, and he put it on his website. And finally, that great question, which we have to give a shout out to our producer Joe for and that is I did check and Virginia is a one-party consent state so basically if one party makes a recording they're consenting to it and that's all you need some states I think Maryland is a two-party you need both parties to consent but not Virginia so he was able to put it on his website guys and uh, the plot thickens all right, Seema, thank you so much again for joining us from Charlottesville in the Unite the Right to trial. Yeah, thank you, Seema. One thing's for sure, the defendant's continually trying something new in the courtroom. Fox 46 chief legal expert Seema Iyer, you see her there, is the only reporter from Charlotte following along from inside the courtroom for the entirety of the Unite the Right trial. She will continue to bring us exclusive new details from inside the courtroom throughout the trial right here on Fox 46.